All right, I have something special for you here in episode 30. I'm going to show you a little bit about steam donkeys. These were steam-powered winches that they used out in the woods for logging. Here in the Pacific Northwest, there's a number of places around, not too far from where I live, that have these static displays sitting around. Of course, they were drug around from place to place, and the heart of them was either a one- or two-cylinder steam engine. So they were able to produce this power by burning the leftover wood that was laying around. And of course, they used whatever they could find. Notice the logs here that they used as skitters. And they'd get beat up, and they'd roll down the hill, and they'd rebuild them. If you have any kind of a forest area on your layout, you're going to need one of these to look good. Have a little logging operation. Generally speaking, they had at least two drums for the wires. And sometimes they'd have a steam engine piston on both sides, sometimes just one side. And these were a very basic machine. They were generally operated by a single individual unlike steam locomotives on the railroad, which almost always required at least two. Now here from the KMP models, folks, they happen to have a very nice in-scale Willamette Yarder steam donkey. And this is a kit that I put together, and I'll show you how it goes together. It's a lot of fun. Comes with a number of parts, some of them metal, some of them wood, and some of them plastic. Basically, there's quite a bit of uh, small detail stuff that you have to spend the time to put together. Of course they come with nice instructions which well it leaves a lot of room for modeling on your own. They're only a fairly light direction. What I did like a lot were the blueprint type directions that also come with them and really show you how the pieces go together. That's the part I like the best. Of course you folks that have worked with these white metal kits before you know you need to invest in some good tools to work with them. You need some really sharp drill bits, not the cheap ones from like Harbor Freight, but get the good ones because you have to have these holes in the accurate positions. And of course working with this white metal kit, I like to use super glue or CA. It comes in a number of different possibilities, different companies that manufacture it. Now when you drill these holes, make sure that they're very accurate. Make sure you get the hole in the right place the first time because you haven't got a second choice. Of course, before you start gluing things down, check with the instructions again. Make sure you know exactly where it's supposed to be because once that glue sets up, it's stuck. As you start adding the parts together, make sure everything fits before you start using the glue because that CA glue, it's a bugger. Now this is either the overpressure valve or the whistle, I don't know which. Either way, you got to learn how to bend this copper tubing to get it exactly the way you want it. And be careful with the glue, as I've said before. Less is more. You don't want big globs of glue. And of course, these steam donkeys were drug around in the woods. And if you weren't real careful, they'd fall over and fall apart. So they had quite a bit of all kinds of supports. And then, of course, you need the controls. you got to be able to start and stop it. So make sure everything's correct before you glue it into place. As you start moving into more of these advanced kits, you might want to invest in one of these scale metal rulers. It tells you exactly how many feet scale that you might want. And they come in all the different scales, Z, N, H, O, O, the bigger ones. Now as you start to put the skid together, of course you want to put the cross beams in, and then you start laying the decking. For this kind of gluing with wood on wood, I always like to go back to my old friend, Elmer's white household glue. And there are some other white metal parts that need to be put on here and there. I go back to the CA glue when I have two dissimilar items like the metal and the wood. As you progress make sure to read the directions because there are some simple little things that might easily be missed. This is a footstep that I almost forgot. And then of course you need to make sure everything is in the right place before you let the glue set up otherwise it won't come out right. Now we're starting to build the rain shield for it. These have to be very specifically placed. If you get them wrong, then the steam donkey kit won't work. And then of course you gotta glue this into place, your, your steam donkey unit. And you can see all the piping that I've done around on it. The more carefully you do the piping, the better it's gonna come out. 
Then of course any steam engine has to have a water source and you build your own water tank which is kind of a fun little thing. It's a nice little thing. And moving right along, of course when you get the water tank done it's time to put it on. And it actually came out really nice. You have to take your time with it so it looked good but then it comes out really nice. Now you have to build the frame for the cover, the rain shield, and of course out there in the woods they'd use anything they had laying around for these rain shields. Sometimes they were open, sometimes they weren't, kind of depending on where you were. Now this is just the underlay for the metal, so these don't have to be any particular length, they don't have to be any particular size. They do have to get stuck on there good and hard because then the metal goes on top. Now in the front here, the rain shield was movable. Sometimes these wires coming off the drums would go way up in the air. So sometimes you'd want the shield down and sometimes you'd want it up. Just made for a little more comfortable operation of these steam donkeys. Now with the metal, I painted them silver because, well, most metal roofing is silver. Then I cut them up into little pieces and just kind of laid them on. Out in the field, they would use, like I said, anything that was laying around and sometimes things would blow away and you'd have to go find a different piece. Well here we are just about finished. What do you think? Looking pretty good if you ask me. This kit took me, oh including coloring and everything, maybe about two and a half hours. I enjoyed this kit a lot. I look forward to putting it into a scene. It's got a lot of detail to it. I even thought about putting a little more detail and then I thought well no I want to try it just the way it came from the kit. Boy, it sure did come out nice. Now think about your layout. Haven't you got some place where you could have a little logging operation? Maybe a few trees down, maybe a few loggers out there banging around? Adds interest to your layout. Always have things going on so people can say, oh, what's that? Well, I'd like to thank you folks for joining me again at Murphy's Welcome to My World, episode number 30. And you guys come back and join me again sometime soon. Have fun with your trains. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.